Hello physics fans, Mr. Avis here. In this video we're going to talk about the basics of uniform motion. Now to talk about uniform motion we have to define what we're talking about and that involves frames of reference. Now we always describe motion relative to some stationary point, but what's stationary? Are you stationary? Is the Earth stationary? The galaxy? Everything's moving. There is no actual stationary point in space. So we have to define our frame of reference. What are we defining as stationary? Now typically we define the surface of the Earth as stationary because for most of our problems that's the important thing is how fast is something moving with respect to the surface of the Earth? Or where is it with respect to the surface of the Earth? Now this is good. Even though the Earth's moving, we can define even a moving object as our stationary point. So for this class we say the surface of the Earth is our stationary object. Now let's talk about sign conventions. Before we get started, we want to know what do we mean by positive and negative, just so that we all agree. So usually, when you're talking about sign conventions, you look at a coordinate plane, an x and y axes, and we think about the positive and negative directions on those. So, up and to the right are going to be positive directions, down and to the left are going to be negative. And if we're talking about compass directions, we use the same axes, and we say north is going to be positive and east is going to be positive, and we say south and west are going to be negative. So it's easiest to keep in mind that positive and negative x and y axis as you're figuring out what your signs mean. Now, vectors versus scalars. Remember, scalars only have magnitude. Vectors have both magnitude and direction. And when we're talking about motion, some of our values are going to be scalars, some are going to be vectors. So always keep in mind, if it's a vector, you have to say the direction. And if you're talking about the change in a vector, that could be a change in either the magnitude of the vector or the direction of the vector. And we'll see how that works in just a little bit. Now our first quantities we're going to talk about are distance and displacement. Distance, which we write as a lowercase d, it's talking about how much ground has passed beneath your feet as you're walking. It's just how far have you gone. Whereas displacement, which we write as delta s, a change in position, is how far you are from where you started. It doesn't matter how you got there, it's just how far you are from where you started. Now which one of these is a vector? Well, the one that has direction in it is a vector, so that's going to be displacement. Now let's look at an example of these. So if I walk 3 meters east, 2 meters south, 3 meters west, and then 2 meters north? What is my displacement? How far am I from where I started? Well, I'm in the same place I started, so my displacement is going to be zero. But what total distance did I walk? Well, if you add up all those distances, you end up with 10 meters. It doesn't matter uh, what direction I'm going. All that matters is 10 meters went beneath my feet. So that's the difference between distance and displacement. Now two more quantities, speed and velocity. They're similar, but a little bit different. Speed we write as a lowercase r for rate, and that's just distance over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Speed is going to be a scalar quantity, because distance is a scalar quantity, so we'd measure that in meters per second. Whereas velocity is a vector, it has both speed and direction. And so that, we're going to have to say things like 10 meters per second north. We have to include a direction there. Now there's two different types of velocity we could talk about. Average velocity or instantaneous velocity. When we talk about average velocity, we're looking at the total distance, really total displacement, over total time. So V equals delta S over T would give us our average velocity. Whereas if we're talking about our instantaneous velocity, we want to know how fast and what direction we're going right now. So the speedometer on your car would be an example of something that gives you instantaneous velocity. Well, your speedometer doesn't tell you direction, so we'll say it tells you instantaneous speed. It's how fast you're going right now. Acceleration has to do with a change in velocity. And here's an equation for acceleration. A equals delta V over T. Now when we're talking about a change in velocity, remember Velocity is a vector, so we could change two things. We could change the magnitude of the velocity, the speed, or we could change the direction. And either one of those we change would give us acceleration. So we could keep going the same speed and change direction, such as going around in a circle at a constant speed, and we would still be accelerating. 
Now the units of acceleration are meters per second squared, and it's a vector. Velocity is a vector, we're using velocity, so acceleration is a vector. Now, how can we tell if something is speeding up or slowing down just by looking at velocity and acceleration? Well, if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, that could be both positive or both negative, then our object's speeding up. It's like they're helping each other, since they're pointing in the same direction. So that's when things are speeding up. When they're slowing down, you may have already figured this out, is when the signs are opposite. If you have a positive acceleration and a negative velocity, you're going to be slowing down. Or a negative acceleration with a positive velocity, you're going to be slowing down there also. And no discussion of speed would be complete without showing you a picture of the speed demon. This is the fastest car that is driven by wheels. It's gone well over 400 miles an hour. So, pretty cool picture, pretty fast car. I'll see you next time.